Several things make this recipe stand out as extraordinary. First, it delivers a taste and a texture that we don't expect from duck. Even if you use a domestic farm-raised duck, the seasoning and flavors deliver the gamey taste of wild duck. Second, we're used to duck having a thick, crunchy skin, but this has a beautiful, delicate, thin skin. It's not the least bit greasy, yet still rich and intensely flavored. In short, it surprises you with flavors that you don't expect from a duck. Ideally, you would serve this as part of a larger plate with a theme such as duck three ways, with this element being the most technically difficult and time consuming, as you'll see. To fry these walnuts, I'm going to actually use walnut oil. And it's a couple of tablespoons. It's okay, we're also going to use the walnut oil. After the walnuts are cooked, we're going to cook the onions in the same pan. Okay. This should only take about three, four minutes, something like that, before you've got enough color on them. You have to make sure that they don't burn, you know. Burning uh, nuts on when you're toasting was like the classic mistake to make for everybody who's even experienced cooks because they go from being not cooked enough to being burnt in about 30 seconds, so you really have to watch them. And, and also, you have to look at the color of them. You can see them darkening. It means they're getting very close. And uh, looking at the time now, they've been in there about three minutes right now. Okay, I'm going to call these, I'm going to call these food. Now into the same pan, 60 grams of onion, and we'll drain a little bit of this walnut oil back into the pan. Now cooking this onion, I've turned the heat way down to uh, like three and a half. I'm also going to add uh, about a teaspoon of sugar and a little bit of salt to help break up the onion. Uh, the sugar, I want it to caramelize. I want these onions to be a little bit sweet because of the final application here. They've been cooking for about five minutes now, and I'm going to add uh, you know, one clove of sliced garlic to them. This is um, the reason I'm not adding it sooner is I don't want the garlic to be burnt in any way. And I'm not looking to really brown these onions either. I just want to, to uh, kind of sweat them a little bit, get them started. So I'm going to let this sit in the pan for another uh, about two more minutes, and then I'm going to let it begin cooling down. Actually, what else I can do now is I can add those walnuts back in. And then this whole mixture is just going to get put off to the side uh, to cool down while I make the, the while I prepare the, the duck. You don't use a really, really giant duck leg for this because that means the duck was older, it will be very tough, and you'll end up with, no matter what you do, it'll be stringy. So the first step is, is to French the, the, the leg. This is the exact same method you would do with chicken leg. If you watched my other video, um, then you know how to do this. You, you peel this off. The first step. Don't be too rough on it, otherwise you'll, you'll break the, the bone. They can be a little bit slippery at the end here, but okay, I'll, I'll, I'll clean this off with a knife in a second. Now you've got these these uh, tendons here that run into the meat, and you got to pull them out. Again, it's it's exactly like the chicken. Okay. This thing's giving me problems, so I'm just going to go ahead and take it off with a knife. <laughs> Usually, I could just tear it off, but. The tendons that run through the, the duck leg are a lot tougher than the ones that go through a chicken leg. So you, have, you may have difficulty pulling these out with your bare fingers. You can use a pair of pliers to help you. It's a little bit of a tedious process, but it's worth it because the, the end result will be really good. You won't have any of those tough bits that you're used to having in uh, leg meat. We're just going to get rid of all of them this way. And after a couple of minutes, you, you get them all out of there. Now, you've got to flip it over and we've got to remove the bones. So we've got this bone that runs along here. And the easiest way, again, like, like when you're and I showed you how to, to debone the chicken thigh. It's the same sort of thing. You just want to work your, your finger in there, get it down under the bone, and lift it up. Once you begin, you've been separating it, just scrape off a little bit of the meat down the bone here to get access to the joint. 
then bend the joint backwards you can hear it pop there we go and you begin working the knife down a little bit here also now we've got the skin to peel back and this is going to be a little bit more difficult with chicken skin you're going to have to be a little bit more careful to not rupture the whole thing because duck skin uh, is attached much better <laughs> to the meat than chicken skin is so you're going to have to be a little bit more careful here you can't just peel the whole thing back like you can on, on uh, chicken you're going to have to you're going to have to actually work it back a little bit at a time here and I just keep working it I got this bone out I got the knuckle out I found a few more uh, pieces of tendon and you just keep keep exploring it now we get it to this point where it's basically it's just this this one bone that's in the middle here now we have to begin with what I consider the hardest part because you, you have to get the meat off of the skin as cleanly as you can without cutting the skin and like I said duck meat is not like working with, with chicken meat. You're, you're going to have to be careful. You scrape it, use a really sharp knife and scrape it and be sure that you don't puncture the skin. You want to try to get as much as the meat as you can off of it without without destroying the, the integrity of the skin. And after a few minutes this is this is what you end up with. <laughs> well a few minutes if you are not an expert at this and I'm not an expert at this to be honest you know I'm, I, I can do it but I'm not an expert butcher if I was an expert butcher a guy that stands here and does this whole day they'd be laughing at me saying hey, you, could, you could do this in 60 seconds okay, I can't do it in 60 seconds but it can be done so you get you get it down here you'll see there's this one other bone that runs along the leg here you want to take a knife and run between these two bones and you want to get this, this other one off because this is going to be that nasty little sharp splinter bone that you get in the meat so work this off get it out of there okay that's trash and yeah, see another another tendon lurking and scrape down the bone a little bit more get rid of all those tendons including when you went through the meat here you needed to, to pull out any tendons that you saw now I've got it's got this flap solid piece of nice skin with the bone sticking through it now we're going to put this off to the side and repeat the entire process for another <laughs> another duck leg or two or however many you're making this meat goes into a bowl and uh, we'll, we'll come back and process this later it's just a matter of starting all over again and it's time to make up the filling first thing I'm going to put in here is the walnuts and the onions which I'm sure by now even for an experienced butcher has had plenty of time to cool down while you took care of those duck legs <laughs> so we're going to grind this up a little bit first this is walnut chopping those walnuts will be the hardest part ok now I've got that thyme and sage fresh picked thyme and sage I'm going to throw in along with the carefully picked duck meat from both two, two um, of the legs add the egg yolk and just a little bit like maybe tablespoon or so of breadcrumbs, dry breadcrumbs to this because duck is very fatty and you want it to any fat that's in there you want it to be absorbed there I go. and after you scrape down the sides a little bit you're in a better position now to judge how much salt and pepper to put in don't forget to season it okay. and the last, the last round now we transfer this to a bowl and sometimes despite your best efforts you'll see a, a little tendon or maybe even more than one that's on the surface there obviously pick those out and get rid of them if you, those will be the tough bits when you're done uh, I did a pretty good job and I don't see any here but you may see some so <laughs> get them out of there um, I'm going to cover this with cling film and refrigerator this will be much easier to work with when it's colder yeah, for the tricky part this has been chilled for about oh, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half. Um, I've got some plastic spread out, and I'm going to grab one of these boned-out duck legs. 
Now the skin, of course, is just slides up and down on the bone now because I took everything else out. So the, the key here to doing this well is you have to kind of spread it out. It's kind of it's kind of disgusting if you think about it, <laughs> but you want to you want to spread this out over your hand like this, like it was uh, you know, something out of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> and now you're going to take this meat, the meat, and you're going to wrap it around the bone, form it around the bone. This is why you wanted to chill it first, because it's stiff now. It'll be a lot easier to work with. If, if it's uh, runny, it's just going to run all over the place. <laughs> you're not going to be able to get it to, to hold together. Now, how much to use? I mean, ideally, you want to use half of the meat so that you got enough for the whole thing. But that may not be possible. You may have a little bit more meat than than you have room for in it. So you just have to, to play with it a little bit and start folding up the skin. Now, unlike the, when you do it with a chicken leg, you want the skin to overlap completely. You really don't want that in the, in the duck leg. You want to have very little overlap because duck leg skin is very fatty and very thick and if you have multiple layers of it it's just going to be chewy and nasty here so this is this is the trick here and it is a trick you got to pack it down and try to seal up the skin without any overlap very different from when you do it with a chicken like I said the chicken you can have the skin overlap a couple times it's not a problem here you got to kind of play with it if you got a little bit too much filling Take your finger, stick it in, pull out a little bit of the filling. Try to make it, try to make the, the seams go together just right so that it latches together. Now, when it's like this, this is fine because the rest of the way it's, it's going to seal up on, on wrapping and cooking. So this is, this is about what we want here. It's kind of bound up like right now. It's going to go down seam side down onto the plastic a little piece here in the back we're going to have to smooth out too and uh, then we're going to begin wrapping it up with the plastic of course and don't try to you don't try to do it all in one um, wrap because you're going to you're going to have the more than one layer of plastic on it so the, the first one is is just to make sure that the form is is roughly right and it's going to take a little practice to be able to do this smoothly. Now here you can see you've got some of the filling is kind of like le leaked, not exactly leaked out, but, but it's, it's not completely sealed. That'll be okay. When we're done with this, there'll be a mark here, but when we plate it up, we'll plate it up the other side down. It'll be down in the sauce and nobody will see it. So, but you want it, otherwise you want it as, as clean as you possibly can get it. Now I'm going to tie this up. I'm going to go get some more plastic. I'm going to wrap up some more here. I'll just show you I did the other one. The other one came out a little better because I didn't have to try to move behind the camera while I was, uh, <laughs> was operating. It's always difficult to, to work and struggle over the top of the camera here. I have no cameraman. Uh, this one's really uh, going to be more of a challenge, but, but it'll be okay in the end. I've wrapped both of them in uh, plastic, two layers of plastic wrap. Now I'm going to wrap them up in foil, and uh, as you can see, I used virtually all of the force filling. There's, there's really nothing sizable left. So these are going to get wrapped in foil, and then they're going to get steamed. Okay, and in here, the steamer basket, as I explained before, you always have a seam when you wrap things in foil, the seam always goes down, because that way moisture can't come up and get trapped in between the layers, whatever, whatever moisture condenses in there has to run back out again. So, we begin this timer, and uh, come back in about half an hour here. Making this sauce is quite straightforward, and if you're watching my videos, I shouldn't need to show you the, the obvious step of, of putting the, all the ingredients in the pan to reduce it. So I'm going to put um, three cloves. This is called a peak. I'm making a peak with uh, three cloves in it. It's a little piece of onion. It weighs about uh, an ounce, about 30 uh, grams, and this is going to go into the sauce. Here we have the pot with all of the other ingredients already in it, just beginning to heat. Um, and just put that in. You're going to stir this around a little bit, heat it slowly. You want to keep the temperature somewhere around 75, 80 degrees to reduce it down slowly. Uh, when it gets like this, if you can see that clearly, it's basically done for this stage. We've got to 
uh, strain it and then we're going to um, we'll heat it up when we actually need it reduce it just a little bit more than this to get it to this stage at 75 degrees took over an hour by the way and just strain it now we've got this other pan when we're actually ready for service we will um, whisk just a little bit of butter into this um, to make it extra smooth and glossy but but this is our sauce now for the day. and when we're actually ready to cook this I've taken it out of the refrigerator uh, ahead of time for what about an hour now don't forget it's completely cooked so it's it's not going to spoil um, now it's just a matter of unwrapping it getting all this plastic off of it and then once you do that take paper towel it's going to have this gel on it there's this like basically concentrated duck stock which is what it, it poached in its own juices when it was wrapped up there we want to get rid of some of this okay because we're trying to, to dry this out and get crispy skin we don't we don't need to have a bunch of moisture on it it's going to have to burn off first okay now it's like this now it goes on to on a wire rack like this so that it has air that can circulate on all sides and put it into the uh, oven with a convection fan running. You can hear. And this is what it looks like after 25 minutes. In order to go from this to the crispy skin that you want, you just hit it with a torch. It goes really easy. Here we have the, the final dish. Of course, if this was restaurant presentation, I would put some uh, little baby carrots and some greens across here to, to, to pretty it up. But, but this is the, the crux of the dish here. This is the hard part. I'll show you what it looks like when it's cut into. You hear the, the crispness of the skin there? There we have the interior. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology. Available through Amazon online.